Hello everyone, welcome to this NPTEL course on advanced reinforced concrete design. A brief introduction about myself, I am currently uh, working as professor in the department of civil engineering at IIT Hyderabad. Before joining IIT Hyderabad, I also worked as a design engineer for more than two and a half years at structural group based out from Baltimore in the US. I completed my PhD from University, Missouri University of Science and Technology in the year 2009. Currently my research group which my lab is named CASCAN lab, uh, we do a lot of work on understanding the behavior of reinforced and pre stress concrete behavior. We are also working a lot on developing affordable housing for precast systems and also our group focuses on developing sustainable strengthening solutions for repair uh, and rehabilitation of concrete structures. I have about 16 years of uh, research and teaching experience and uh, so far uh, uh, 12 students have uh, got their PhDs under my guidance and our group also has published more than 100 research papers in internationally reputed journals on all the above research areas that I talked about. I am also currently serving as associate editor for ASC Journal of Bridge Engineering and also on the editorial board of ASC Journal of Composites for Construction. Right, so let's uh, understand the objectives of this course. Uh, as the name says, this is a design course, but uh, you can understand and uh, the design aspects if you understand the behavior of reinforced concrete members. So the major objective would be is to understand the behavior of reinforced concrete under compression, tension, flexure, shear and torsion. These are all the major loading scenarios that we will have. And we will also do a lot of practice problem solving in reinforced concrete uh, for flexure, shear, torsion and their combinations as well. And we look at specific elements like one way slab which is again a bending member and then we will also focus on what is short column, what is the difference between short column and slender column and then we will also do some practice problem solving on footing design. And uh, we will also spend quite a bit of amount on how to design a column for axial compression and bending and we will also talk about what is biaxial bending, how to develop three dimensional interaction surface and how to design a slender column co by considering additional moments and uh, uh, finally, we will also spend a lot of time on two-way slabs. Now, this is a brief outline of the syllabus. The module 1 will talk about uh, introduction. Basically, we will start with what, the, what is the history of reinforced concrete, what are the advantages of going for reinforced concrete construction over other conventional materials and we will also talk about what is load path, how the loads get transferred from one element to another element and what are the different types of structural systems that are used in modern concrete construction. Then we will move on to module 2 which is the material aspects. We will talk about stress strain behavior of concrete, uh, also steel and the tension and then how the concrete is going to behave under multi-axial stress. We will also uh, spend some time on what are the failure theories for concrete under combined stress state, what is tension stiffening and what is the effect of creep shrinkage and temperature on the material and structural behavior. So this will be focusing more on the material aspects. Then we will move on to the module 3 which is on durability aspects. Again uh, reinforced concrete where steel is typically used as a reinforcement they undergo corrosion. In addition to that cementitious systems also they undergo some degradation mechanisms. So we will talk about what are the different degradation mechanisms of concrete including alkalicity per reaction, sulfate attack, corrosion of steel and how we can tackle this corrosion. How even at the material level what things you need to be very careful uh, to design a concrete mix so that they are very uh, having dense microstructure, what kind of supplementary cementitious material that you need to use to come up with a dense microstructure, all those things that we will talk uh, in this module on durability aspects. Then we will move on to behavior of reinforced concrete members under pure axial load. We will explain 
what are the basic laws of mechanics, how to derive the load displacement behavior for RC members under pure axial compression and tension. And with that uh, example, we will be able to understand what is the role of concrete and steel in compression uh, and also in tension. So, which one is going to contribute more in load resistance in compression and tension, we will talk about. And then finally, we will also explain what are the differences in behavior for high strength and normal steel concrete. With that, then we will move on to the module 5, which will focus on behavior and design aspects of flexion. We will talk about what is basic flexural theory, how to do the analysis at ultimate case and then for section analysis typically we do moment curvature analysis. What is the relationship between moment curvature and load deflection of a member and uh, when we do section analysis there are several parameters that affect the behavior of a section in flexure. So, we will talk about what is the effect of reinforcement ratio that means how much reinforcement I put on the tension side will have a major role on how the flexural behavior will be. So, we will talk about that and then also concrete strength and then we will talk about what is the role of compression steel vis a vis tension steel and then finally, we will also spend some time on how to do the design using IS code provisions. So, here both aspects will be covered if I use actual material properties how the behavior will be and if I use uh, the IS code provisions what kind of behavior that you will get all this thing that we will talk in this module 5. Then module 6 again shear is also very important we will talk about how to do the analysis and design of reinforced concrete members for shear loading. First we will focus on what is the relationship between flexure and shear and what is the role of shear span to depth ratio which is again very important parameter how the shear span depth ratio will influence the flexure to shear behavior and what is nominal shear, what are the critical sections, what are the critical sections, what are the critical sections for shear and uh, concept of more circle and what are the different failure modes possible in shear and what are the various internal mechanisms that can help in resisting the shear, all this thing that we will focus in this module 6. Then we will move on to module 7 which is going to be on analysis and design for torsion where again we will see how the reinforced concrete members will behave under torsion and what the different design methods for torsion are available. There are typically two basic types of torsion that are uh, to be dealt with. One is equilibrium torsion and it is a compatibility torsion. So, we will see what is equilibrium torsion, what is compatibility torsion and then we will also spend some time on how the code equations were derived okay? and, uh, and also what is equivalent shear and what is equivalent bending. That means from torsion, how can I convert the torsion into equivalent shear and equivalent bending. So, we will explain that and then with an example and then we will also uh, take up one example for how to design a section for combined loading. That means the section is subjected to bending, torsion and shear. So, how do we design it? With that, we will get into module 8 columns again, which is very important topic. To distinguish between short column and long column, we, uh, we have to establish this concept of effective length. So, we will spend some time on that and with that definition of effective length, we can calculate slenderness ratios. So, we will see using slenderness ratios how to calculate differentiate between short column versus long column and then confinement is a very important aspect. The role of stirrups or the ties or spirals play a very important role in confining the concrete core. Why is it important for maxial load particularly for columns? We will talk about that and then we will also spend some time on deriving axial compression bending interaction curves. Then we will move on to design of slender columns and design of sections for axial bending. With that we will be completing the columns chapter. Then we will move on to module 9 which is on serviceability checks. Again. Uh, from reinforced concrete design point of view, usually we design for ultimate condition, but then we need to also check for serviceability, right. And also now durability is also coming into the mainstay in the design. So, that is also an important aspect that we need to take. In module 9, we will talk about what are the difference between short and long term deflections, 
and then how to estimate deflections, what are the relationship between curvature and deflections, how to estimate crack width, again crack widths have to be kept less than certain allowable limit, usually 0.3 millimeter is a maximum uh, under service loads. So, how to estimate for a particular service moment the crack width and what are sinkage cracks and what are the effects of vibrations and fatigue, all those things that we will discuss in this module 9. Then we will move on to module 10, which is again a very important topic. Uh, most of the, we have seen that most of the design engineers use code coefficient method for design of two-way slab, which is entirely strictly not correct. So, we will talk about what are the difference between one-way slab and two-way slab and what are the limitations of code coefficient method and what is a direct design method, which is uh, a simplified method, which has some limitations. We will talk about what is that and then a more generic method, which is equivalent frame method. Uh, how people use equivalent frame method to design a two-way slab, we will spend some time and we will also uh, introduce what is yield line analysis and then how to design a two-way slab with a, a real case study example and we will compare the results between direct design and equivalent frame method. So, uh, with that we will be completing the, the essential modules for this course because it is a three credit course. Uh, you, you can have only about 35 hours of content, 30 to 35 hours. So, uh, we also uh, uh, will be floating another NPTEL course on special topics in reinforced concrete design uh, that will be available from June 2026. In that course can be taken together with this advanced reinforced concrete course, then it will become a four credit course. The topics on this uh, special topics will, will include a detailed description of what is stratton type model, how stratton type models can be used for designing and then how to design a shear wall and then design of continuous beams and moment frames and using STM again deep beams and corbels can be designed. So, all these very uh, advanced topics will be covered in the special uh, topics in reinforced concrete design course. Right now grades for this advanced reinforced concrete design course. Uh, uh, you can take the exam which is optional and you have to pay a fee of 4000 rupees as you all know. And for this year, it has been said that the exam is going to be on 26th October. Of course, once you register, you will all get all the notifications. The exam is usually conducted in two sessions, morning and afternoon session and you can select one of them and you can attend the exam. Now, what are the criteria to get certificate? Each week we will also give an assignment and uh, for 12 weeks, so you will get 12 assignments in that you will take the best 8 assignments and the assignment scores will carry 25 percentage weightage. In the exam will be for 100 marks and then 75 percentage of the marks will, will be given weightage for the combined score. So, the final score will be average assignment score plus exam score. So, this is 25 percentage and this is 75 percentage. So, you add them up and you get the final score. Now, you, the candidate will be eligible for certificate only if the average assignment score is more than 10 out of 25 and the exam score should be at least 30, more should be more than 30 for 75 marks after converting to 75. So, even if one of the candidate is not met, the candidate will not be eligible to get the certificate even though the combined final score becomes more than 40. So, please keep a note on that. So, do all the assignments properly and uh, look at the videos properly and we also have a discussion forum where you can raise your queries and uh, the TAs will be available for each week. They will be helping you with the material and available for discussion. So, uh, textbook, uh, we have a very nice textbook uh, by uh, Professor Pillai and uh, Professor Menon uh, on reinforced concrete design. So, you, that will be a very good reference book for this course. You can use that. And then uh, one of the classic books is by James White and uh, McGregor, uh, which is on reinforced concrete mechanics and design. It is a, a fantastic reference to have. So some of the materials that uh, for this NPTEL course is actually taken from this book by James White and McGregor. And then we also have another nice book, Nielsen, Darwin and Dolan on reinforced concrete design and design of structures. So, we can also 
and there is one more classic reference which is spark and poly uh, which is again you know nowadays readily not available but again you you may be able to find a soft copy of that so this is also a very fantastic reference so, but mostly uh, the material that will be shared with you will be sufficient and you can also look at the textbook for any additional references that you wish code books because it's a design course you know we will be following the um, the code uh, in, in india we use a bureau of india standard code and for reinforced concrete is is 456-2000 as you all know now in fact uh, 2025 draft version is come but it is not official yet so for this year uh, content we will be still using is 456-2000 but uh, uh, this has gone a major uh, change so we will also uh, spend some time what are the changes uh, but for most of the content will be from this current code that is in practice which is IS 456-2000 and we also have SP16 especially when you design a column you will be using a lot of design aids so we will be using that as well and then for loads whenever you design the design load should be of minimum uh, as per the standard. So, for loads typically we use IS875 which has 5 parts depending upon what type of load that we use. So, we will be using that and some of the explanations for IS456 comes from SP24 which is an explanatory handbook and then we also have SP34 which is talking about detailing aspects. In reinforced concrete it is not only coming up with the design and the amount of reinforcement it is also about how you uh, arrange the bars and how you make sure that they are not they are all connected together some some important regions like joints you need to have adequate amount of reinforcement so all these things are part of detailing your your amount of reinforcement is one aspect then how do you put the reinforcement inside a member is called you know detailing so that is also very important from reinforced concrete design so a lot of information can be taken from this sp type so with that, uh, I once again welcome you all for this NPTEL course on advanced reinforced concrete design. I wish you all a very productive uh, and learning by uh, going through these videos. Thank you.